Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. If it's the first time here, what Beacons of Balance is, first of all, we live in this world of duality, which is up, down, black, white, left, right. It's always going to be that way. And we need to be live our life this way in balance, okay? Right now, the world, we're like this. So we want to bring everybody here. We all want to be here. So we're going to share with you different topics. We have different guest speakers that come in. It's about you to empower yourself, to see your light and raise it and see it in everybody. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome my wonderful co-host, Joanne is with us. And so, yeah. Thank you, Arlene, my beautiful co-host. <laughs> and we have our wonderful guest speaker. Oh my God, Dr. Adele Ryan McDowell. So we're going to go right into it. Dr. Adele Ryan McDowell is a psychotherapist with more than 30 years experience, a teacher of meditation, intuitive development, psycho-spiritual issues, an international workshop presenter, and shamanic energy healer. Adele's work focuses on helping clients find hope and balance in the face of crises, trauma, and grief. She has worked with suicide, domestic violence, and sexual assault in the crisis hotline. She's worked with survivors of Hurricane Katrina, 9-11, the Joplin tornado, the Newtown shooting, clients struggling with addiction, as well as those moving through profound life changes such as grief and health challenges. Adele's work integrates psychology with big picture spirituality to help clients move through crises, restore balance, here we go, balance, by assessing core soul issues and to discover and find comfort in their authentic selves. Plus, on top of that, of course, that wasn't enough. In between, she's published several books. <laughs> And look at her. She's only 20 years old. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, I don't know how she does it, but man, she's she's keyed into something. Not the good so, <laughs> I think today we're going, um, Adele wants to speak about how to stay sane in an upside down world. I don't know, folks. Do you think we're upside down? I mean, <laughs> I I mean, personally, I and this this coming year, I mean, I only want to go into pod, but it's gonna be, I think, a crazy, crazy year. Me. So without further ado, I want my wonderful co-host, Joey, and you could kick it off. Let's kick it off and start with the question. Oh, I'm so excited, Early. Can you feel the energy in this room? It's like, wow. She this brings is... all kind of energy. I know. It's like, I just feel the all kind of... Doesn't, don't you have like feathers going in? She gives me feathers inside me. I just start giggling. Oh, my God. That's good. <laughs> Adele, I am blown away. I've been reading some of your books and some of the, your, your excerpts. And I'm a quote girl. I love quotes. And the one yeah. thing I noticed is that you've got some pretty cool quotes. Uh, can you explain your common practice for calming the nervous system, first of all? I, that, well, that yeah, the, well, there's so much out about cortisol these days, you know, our cortisol levels and how we're responding to stress. And there's so many different things that we can do. I'm going to tell you a couple. One of the, uh, in psychoneuroimmunology, which mind, body, spirit, basically, one of the easiest things you can do actually is smile. Because when you smile, you regulate things. Right. But one of the other things you can do is if you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh my God, I have so much to do and I can't handle this or that phone call. I can you believe what the kids did or whatever. Sing or hum. Hum. It, yes. Sing or hum. It, it will help you. And from a Chinese perspective, there's a thing where, and I often do this, you know, when you're brushing your teeth in the bathroom, you raise your heels and drop them, raise your heels and drop them. That will also help. That They're just little things that you can do. Um, they're easy enough to do, but they, they just help when you feel a little more empowered, right? I mean, of course, breathing always helps. How we think always helps. Taking time for ourselves always helps. Radical self-care has got to be the name of the game, or we're just... We're not going to make it through. We're right. not going to make it through if we if we don't honor ourselves, because we raised our soul pan to be here now, and by that there's no mistake that any of us are here now, going through the craziness of the world, the divisiveness and all of that. I do have a client that says to me, "Well, if that's my soul contract, next time I wish I read the fine print because <laughs> I'm not so thrilled with this." But it's but everything, it's it's not like it's all predetermined. 
But somewhere along the line, we're all part of this bubbling matrix of light, and we kind of bump into each other. But we're supposed to be here now during this very crazy world time. It is a crazy world time. Fancy. No name this time of something in history, right? Right. And 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 being here and showing who we are, it's hard to stay in the moment. It's hard to be pleasant when somebody's snarky. And people are so quick to be snarky and mean, right? So quick because, and why are they snarky and mean? Most likely they're wounded and traumatized and don't feel things are fair or they're suffering. Right. I mean, I don't think people, you know, some people I guess are mean spirited, but it, it's hard. And then people, and then sometimes if we, if we're a jerk, when we say something that's jerky, then we feel badly and we have to go back and say, look, I'm sorry, I was a jerk. <laughs> I have a funny meme that is a, a decorated cake and it says, I'm sorry I said what I said when it was 116 degrees outside. <laughs> oh, that's good. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I think people are so hard on themselves now too. And you had a great quote in one of your books and it said, forgive yourself for what could have been, what should have been. So spot yeah. on. So yeah. Spot I mean, it's, because if we don't have compassion for ourselves, right? How are we going to have it for other people? Exactly. Uh, all the judging, right, left, red, blue, green, white, whatever we're doing, right. it, we forget about the compassion, right? It's yeah. like, have you seen those things online where the guy's running, he's running the marathon, and here he goes, and here he goes, and he's almost there, but he's from another country and cannot interpret the signage properly, and he falters, and the guy behind him who's close on his heels pushes him first and they said why did you do that and he said well because right you know it's those things it's like the little boy who got upset about animals and started a fundraiser with lemonade in his front yard and ended up making something like six grand for the local shelter a little boy right mm -hmm. or the other kid who designed something these, these kids today oh my gosh um, I had the opportunity to go be at a school for kids that would be considered on the spectrum, right? And I wrote a thank you note to the head of the school, and I said, meeting these kids, they're going to be the future. And you know why I think that? One, they see patterns the rest of us don't see. Right. Right? Yeah. Two, their energy vibration, I think they all came in, and they're, they're a notch up. They, they got a notch oh. up over it. And, and they're going to change the world. And everybody gets so upset about this, that, and the other. We've got lots to learn here, folks. We're not all away. Yeah, I was just telling Arlene how these kids, these this is the new wave coming in. We're paving the way for them. So. Yeah. And and, and I, I, they, I had, there was a teacher in the room. With, there had been a death in this room. There was a teacher in this room. And she was young and bubbly and what have you. And there were three boys, 18, 16, and 10, right? Now, the school is very small. Uh, parents are clearly well healed to be able to afford this kind of education for their kids. And all three of them said they'd been bullied. All three of them had been adopted. The 18-year-old had been in six boarding schools. And they also told me that they were the three best friends and the three class clowns. Of their, the school clowns, right? Now, when you met them, you wouldn't have thought they were so hilarious. But then they was. But the teacher later said to me, "I can't believe that all three of these kids were in room. That doesn't happen. It's usually one on one. And I don't know how it happened. Maybe safety in numbers. And but we all laughed, and we had a good time, and we were able to talk about what we needed to talk about. But and these kids. The way they saw life, they touched my heart. They changed my life. I mean, just that small meeting because they were, they saw the world in such a different way. Yeah. I loved it. We all souls. Yeah. Yeah. You have to meld it together. It's a time of, as we all know, you know, it's been male dominated. The females are coming up now. There's a lot of Mary Magdalene movement, but there's a lot of angry women. I said, no, this is a time we have to come together and join together. And I think as elders, you know, we're the older generation, we have to come together with the youth instead of dumping on them and saying, oh, they're just on their devices or whatever. No, because, they have a lot because, of 
they have a different way of seeing things. We may not get it. And I also think, though, I want to speak to the anger. I think sometimes women need to feel the anger because they haven't felt it. They haven't acknowledged. They haven't felt they were worthy enough. I'm not talking taking a machete to people. I'm talking using that anger as a spark to right. go and make change, as a spark for activism, a spark that says, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. This isn't right. This isn't fair. This isn't equitable. Right? right. I, I, I think anger can teach it. Anger says, hey, something's wrong. Something's out of balance. Right? It can motivate. Everybody's, everybody's welcome at the table. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, what could you talk about on right now? Because everybody's in this place, and I think we just can't throw the word out there and just get rid of it, about overcoming fear. And, of course, my definition has always been false evidence appearing real, you yeah. know, but where people are paralyzed in fear. But First of all, let's, let's, I'm laughing. I had, no wonder I can't hear you. I don't have my head so <laughs> Hello, I'm a smart woman. Hold on, oh, please, it's operator error. Let's see if I can find it. I had to change devices today. So, well, maybe I can't find it. Well, so far we're doing it okay. All right, so we'll go back to fear. That's hilarious. Yeah, plug um, in the computer? I well, was... I, the computer wouldn't work. So now we're on the iPad and I was plugged into the computer and just hold, please. Let's just see if I can find it. Let's see. Okay. Can you hear it again? That? Can you hear oh that? my God. It's amazing. I can hear. Oh, all right. Thank and your you. Or oh. Adele, your orbs just got bigger behind you. Oh, well, good. Hi, orbs. No. Okay, so fear. Okay, fear. We've all got it. It's a human thing. But evolutionary wise, you know, we talk about a survival of the fittest. Well, there is a theory in terms of survival of the fittest that the people who had the most anxiety, in other words, they could read the clues, this is going to happen, right? They're the ones who survive. So I always say to my clients who have some major league anxiety, it's a survival mechanism that if something's not right. But the but you have to be able to contain it and look at it as such, as opposed to, oh my God, I can't leave my house. I can't go to the grocery store. I'm panicked for whatever. Everybody's a bad guy. You know, it, if it colors you that way, that you are so just impacted by fear and the fear could even lead to a little paranoia or, or a little one-sided thinking it's not helpful right so how do we do this we have to feel again it goes back to self you know are we i don't mean strong like i'm um, weightlifting i mean okay can i anchor myself do i believe in myself can i trust myself right. do i understand that people that i like or whatever I may agree with the 87.5% of the things I say, but there could be another 12.5%. I'm like, eh, not so much, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be 100%. It, there's some wisdom there in being grounded in yourself. And if everybody who's listening to this, I would assume is on the spiritual path, however you define it. We believe that we are connected. We have the ability to connect to something more, right? And having that also... When you can feel, have you ever had a moment where um, I, there was a, a, Joanne, you'll love this, there was a quote at some point in time about, um, you know, I'm resting in the unseen arms of God. And for some reason at that time in my life, that was very helpful, right? Nope. So here, to oh, the, one could argue that the opposite of fear is faith, right? Faith in yourself, faith it's going to work out, faith in something bigger or whatever else. Most people, see, this is complicated. It's not an easy answer because I, I, know, I know so many different examples. People who have had trauma in their life, they can watch something on the news and they and I, I don't care how much education they have, you know, they could be a medical professional. And I'm thinking of one that I know right now who is well, a medical professional, but certain things happen in the world, given that the, the, the real life torture she experienced in her youth that triggers, triggers her. Triggers right. And so we and now with trauma is the new word and everybody's, you know, where where do we well, how do we deal with trauma? You know, we deal with trauma by processing it, right? But people don't want to process it. It's too scary. I don't want to get near it or I'm not ready. Person. But trauma lives in the body. Fear lives in the body and also in the brain, right? You know, you can't, you, 
you can't do things. So if I'm fearful, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit down first and I've got to breathe because if I'm afraid, I'm not breathing, right? So I've, I've got to breathe and I've got to breathe deeply and I've got to do a bunch of deep in and out breaths and just say, okay, calm down, Adele, calm down. What's going on here, right? So I'm going to breathe. And then after I breathe, right, and I get centered in myself and I feel grounded, right, because we have to be in our body. If we're not anchored in our body, we're going to be fall over. Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. I can't stand up straight. Whoopsie, because I'm not grounded, right? So we have to, it's simple stuff, but we have to be grounded. And then we look at the fear and then we go, okay, let's, are we going to evaluate? What do we got here? Is this, I, years ago, I had a kid call me. She was hysterical. She's now close to 50. And she has this darling young boy. But when she was in high school, she would call me and go, oh my God, I'm going to flunk my test. And I'm like, is this a rational fear or irrational fear? She goes, what do you mean? I said, did you study? She goes, no. Okay. Rational fear. Okay. <laughs> I want you to put down, I, I said, I want you to put down the phone. And I want you to tell your mother that you're doing this because I suggested so she doesn't freak out. And I want you to do like this. And I want you to scream as loud as you can for about five minutes. Go. And I can hear her. I mean, you know, she put the phone down, but I can hear her. Whoa. She comes back. Now she's laughing. She's like, you're a nut. I'm like, yeah, but okay, how do you feel? So because sometimes you've just got to get that, that heaviness out and look at it irrational fear right it's it's we it's 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 i i'm i'm afraid that the pod people are going to come and take all my we don't have any evidence of pod people come and taking people away at this moment in time right uh irrational fear is um i have a family member going to the hospital i don't want to get sick i'm going to wear a mask right whatever so the you look at it, is it rational is it ra rational you get in your body you grow and then you think, how am I going to deal with this? You know, there's certain things in the world, like if, if we were living in the Ukraine right now, right, we would be on high alert on, on Israel or in Palestine, the Gaza. I mean, we would be in we would be in high alert nonstop because what they're going through is war times, and it's terrifying. And I'm sure everybody's cortisol levels are through the roof. And and sometimes you're thinking he had very very crisp in bad situations like that but it's been ongoing they've got to be exhausted right and in all these places or if you know oh the hurricane's coming the tsunami's coming you know how do i prepare and then what do you do with that fear i have an expression and, and some people go oh god is that all you got yeah this is what i got kids it's called um kiss it to god right kiss it to god there when you can't do anything about it right i'm gonna i've taken care of me I've done whatever preps I've had to do. I'm now going to kiss it to God. It's it, We're kissing it to God, and it's going to be what it's going to be. And sometimes you'll find out that there is a miracle. So let me take you to Chicago and a story I heard from Carolyn Mace in the early 1990s. And um, they would express where they're there. Is that where you live, Joanne? Are you in Chicago? I'm in a suburb of about 34 miles. That, that, that. Oh, you're in Naperville or someplace like that, I, right? Probably was at that conference because I've heard her yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Well, she she's not at a conference. She's This is the story of the, the Kennedy Expressway. Oh. And it's rush hour. There's an accident. And there's a woman who, who sees the accident in the car and she starts right. praying. Praying madly, praying madly, praying madly, praying madly. The woman who was badly injured in the accident, her spirit saw this woman. And whether she got the license plate of the car of this woman, yeah. that part remains a mystery to me. I don't know the answer to that. But many months later, the woman who was in the car accident with a bouquet of flowers goes and knocks on the door of the woman who prayed for her. Oh, wow. And says, thank you for praying for me. It made a difference. Wow. Right? Now, people might say, oh, a little fanciful or whatever. I happen to believe that because I know those things can happen. And right. the, the between the veil, right? And so we have the power of prayer. We have the power of presence. Be in the present moment. If we're too busy thinking about, oh, my God, this could possibly happen and it's not happening, we're wasting our energy. You know, right. if, if, if a mom's kid gets run over, right, 
and 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 she's there and she lifts the car and people go how in god's name did you do that because she had 100 percent of her energy right she could lift the car if we don't have all of our energy we're not terribly effective exactly. and how do we have all of our energy we we have to have dealt with the past stuff and we have to be in present time and attending Right. Now, I do have a little uh, Carolyn May story, if you want to humor me. Do you want to humor uh, me? Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, this is, uh, Carolyn knew this gentleman, David Chetlahay Paladin, born in Arizona. And he and his cousin used to leave the reservation a lot, thinking it was better than white man's world. And the constabulary would pick up the boys and bring them back to the reservation. Now, David would laughingly say, and I got the story from Carolyn Mason, I also talked to his wife, Linda Paladin, who does great work on her own. Anyway, um, uh, David said his mother was a nun and his father was a priest. His mother later left the reservation and became a nursing nun, and the father was a missing priest on the reservation of Chedlahe. Okay, so he and his cousin eventually make their way from Arizona to California. They lie, whatever, they work, they get there, and they, they get a job with the Merchant Marine, and they say they're much older than they are. And so they're on this uh, ship. Chet LaHaye gets friendly with the kids from Germany, and they're all traveling the world and doing this. And he, is, he later becomes an artist. And he's sketching the age holes that the, the Japanese are, are building sites on in the Pacific. So World War II is declared, and they find out that David has lied, and they say to him, you have two choices. You can go to jail for a year, or you can enlist in the Army. I enlist. Right? He enlists in the Army, and then they realize that he's in Navajo. And oh. they say, oh, remember the code crackers? We're going yep. to drop you behind enemy lines, right? And you can uh, connect with somebody else who speaks Navajo, right? and you know get information so he was captured and he was tortured and they said oh there's nothing else we can get from him um you know let's let's send him to a different camp now you know we've all seen the movies where the uh, german shoulders where the rifles shell snell hurry hurry and onto the box cars right well he was one of those people there and he turned around to look at the guy going shell snell and it was his friend oh. when he was on the merchant marine boat and his friend looks at him and recognizes him and puts him on a different boxcar. And this one's to the Dachau. And he goes to the Dachau, and he's there, and he's in the, the kind of barracks. There's a guard there. And the gentleman drops something. And the guard says, oh, sorry. And the gentleman drops something. David Chetley Paladin picks it up. And the guard looks at him and goes, who do you think you are, Jesus Christ? And he orders a hammer and nails. He then hammers his feet to the ground and has him keep his arms outstretched and every time he would wilt right oh i just put my finger on my ass too that was good every time he would wilt um they prop him up and in the middle of the night somebody had maggot covered raw chicken and they were shoving it in his mouth so this happened for three days then they undo him when the allies opened up this camp they found him in a heap of semi-living some dead human beings he weighed about 70 pounds but when they found him he was speaking russian so they gave him to the russians but then he started speaking english and said who he was and they sent him to a va hospital in battle creek michigan he was in a coma um for a couple of years and then he's out of the coma and he says may i, may I go because he's he's 21 this is his life may i may i go visit my family on they said of course you can so he literally drags himself onto the reservation and he meets with the elders and they say okay chat hey tomorrow little colorado river at three o'clock meet us there and he goes okay so the next day three o'clock he trudges there they take the braces like i imagine like polio braces off of his legs they tether a rope around his waist. They lift him and they toss him into the little Colorado River. And they say to him, Chet Lahay, call back your spirit or die. Call well, back your spirit or die. And that for all of us is, if we are carrying all this 
stuff. Well, you know, my Aunt Teresa told me when I was four years old, and this one did this, and that one did this, or I did this, or I did that. We're human. We're all doing the best we can. We fumble. Some days we're good. Some days we're not so good. Some days, oh, we should stay in bed. But we're trying our best, right? Sure. Or we want to try our best. And so the idea is to call back, not carry all the weight of the old, of the whatever. Clear it out. Do the work on it. Journal, whatever. And be 100%. Call back your spirit or die because that's how we heal. For Chet Lehe, he said that experience was the hardest he'd ever been through. He was swimming for his life, but he realized that the raw chicken was a guy trying to save his life, right? He realized so many things. If memory serves me, just side comment, I think he was involved in something with the, the was at the Nuremberg trials? I think he, he helped with that too. Um, he he later went on um, and he worked with a lot of alcoholics. He had a big problem in that area. So he worked with a lot of alcoholics and um, alcoholic priests and nuns. <laughs> Kel Supreis, given his background. And the reason he spoke Russian is that he was channeling the Russian artist Kandinsky. And at one point, Kandinsky's best friend came over here and spent time with David Chetley Paladin and the pressure all there going, well, do you think it? He said, I feel like I spent the day with my best friend. Fire. And I... I love this story because I think it applies to all of us, right? Calling back Call everything. Back. All right. Call it all back. And don't and uh, whatever we have. And yes, I want everybody to, to feel their stuff because <laughs> as my clients would often say in group, I'm going, and what's the answer, guys? You have to feel to heal. Yes, we have to feel to heal. All hey, we were born. We're the only planet, to my understanding, that has this capability to feel with a grand experiment, right? So woohoo, let's feel it. I don't right. want a story. That Isn't that fab? Oh my God. I, I, I was waving. I was getting. I got God time. bumps on that one. I got all the way through, all the way. We needed it for our hearts. Everybody that's hearing this, if their heart wasn't touched, then you're a stone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but call back your spirit of your stone. No. And, and don't and give up. That's the main. You know, in Adele, yeah. there was one another quote you had in your book Persistence is the antidote to powerlessness yeah you, we forget how powerful we are we you, do you can't just practice it one day and forget you've got to be persistent you've got to keep going right. and it's just being awake and alive and doing the best you can do every day i mean i God. love is it don miguel ruiz in the four agreements it's like you do your best every day but the understanding is that our best varies one day it might be oh my god i got a headache or oh my god i'm still processing this or oh i'm so freaking tired or it's hot or it's cold or it's whatever but we try the best, right? And if we and if we and if we find ourselves in one of the places, then sometimes we just zip it and we don't say much <laughs> until we work through it. And then then you go put on some good music. Did a lot, I've done a lot of work with people with trauma, and that you know. And I'm like, all right, when you go home, if it's possible, this is what I would like you to do. I want you to go home and put on your favorite music, and I want you to dance or sing around the living room to your favorite yeah. music. Because Get that energy moving, moving, it, yeah, moving. exactly. It changes the energy, and it may, don't you know you're in a car and you're playing a song in your bar oh, yeah. and you're singing? Yeah, you're like, yay! I yep. mean, you put Mustang Sally on. I'm a happy camper. You put a wreath on. I'm singing with her. Yeah, I mean, it's a wreath, yeah. baby. Yeah, it's that's interesting what you said about the feeling because I know Greg Braden. I mean, he traveled to Tibet with the high monks, and he asked them the ones that sit there like for hours, right? That yeah. hours. He said. What are you actually doing? You know, he asked those questions. Oh, those are good they questions. Said, they said they're feeling the prayer. They're feeling the words. And that came to me because, of course, I'm a recovered Catholic. So we were taught, you know, <laughs> saying the rosary over and over again, saying the Our Father. Blah, 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 blah. Right, right. I feel like you're just recessi- you're reciting this stuff, right, by, by rote. But when I finally came to terms with it late in life, and I dropped from here to here, and I just talked from my heart. Oh my God! Oh my God! It changed. Yeah, like it does. This, you know, it changed. And I it, often just tell myself, um, "Okay, I'm not." You know, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. I make it up, and I'm like, "Just, just 
just be yourself. Just be honest. Just be real. Just be whatever it is because that's how we connect with one another, right? We just, it's the feelings. We can have great ideas. Oh, it's good to debate these thoughts or whatever. But the real connections and that sense of connection, uh, emotional intimacy, whatever comes from sharing feelings, right? Right. Because that's where we're our most vulnerable. And I love Adele when you say, turn on your inner lights. I love that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if we, your lights are well, shining, then it's like you can put out an energy that people want to be near, you know? I I was working with somebody, and she had somebody she talked to, and he would send her, I don't know how she met this man. I think he worked in a car dealership. It was a very unique connection. And he would send her happy quotes every morning or powerful, or how to feel. And this man changed her life because he did that every day. Yeah. Every day. And and he must have had a whole group of people he did this every day. But he just said he spread his lungs. I thought, how lovely is that? You know what I mean? That's what you do. Yeah. But well, we, we th- <laughs> Yeah, but think of the think of the Dalai Lama, right? You know, I, yes. he's always smiling, isn't he? For the yeah. most part he is. He's like, he seems to me that he's a he, even amidst all the the horrors, he he's like, Okay. And we're going to pray for peace. And here we are. We're going to be present. You focus on the blessings, not the bad stuff. No? Yeah, right, right, no. right. That's an interesting okay. thing that you bring up because I want to find, and I think I did come across one time, a picture of Christ smiling. But mm-hmm. think about it. And I don't know if it's just because they fed us this or whatever. You don't see pictures of him smiling. He's always well, well, if I can, Yeah, if I can you sound know? a little snarky here. It probably yeah. served the purpose to have yeah. us, us uh, unhappy instead of get yourself in line instead of whatever. I mean, rem- I, you know, I had the nuns. You say you're a recovered or re- uh, I think I'm a, col- uh, I'm borrowing from the New York Times reporter, I'm a collapsed Catholic. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We yeah. all been there. We all, we, we all are. You, uh, I know. I love the uniforms, though. I loved wearing a uniform in my saddle shoes. Oh, uh, yeah, I was uniform my whole life. <laughs> yeah. That's why I have so many clothes now. <laughs> no. uh, I think we covered um, the quote on light, right? Because Joanne, you asked. No, well, Joanne, but I got, I, listen, funny bunny, I got some others. Wait oh. a second here. <laughs> Off the clock, girl. Give it to us. Give it. Okay. This is a, for Rumi. Be a lamp or a lifeboat or a ladder. Help someone's soul heal. Walk out of your house like a shepherd. Don't you love that? Love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Now, this is uh, the politician who died, the wonderful John Lewis, who lifts her so much, had his head back. I mean, every positive thought we pass between us makes room for more light. That is simple and profound. They're all right. Okay. Nothing. Now, this one, this is Frida Kahlo, the artist. Nothing is more. Uh, worth more than laughter. It is strength to laugh and to abandon oneself to be light. It is strength to laugh and to abandon oneself to be light. That's wow. true. Yeah, well, that's yeah, true. We must, we, all three of us have to be big light bulbs here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I'll give you the last one is Parker Palmer, the educator. In times of deep darkness, we not only need light, we need to be light for one another. Of course, right? Exactly. But, yeah, yeah. But the, the light is... Um, yeah, it just, it, it, it makes us happy. It's why we like music, you know? Well, that's where the logo low. for this show is Beacons of Balance, the light out. Yes, there's you the light out. Light in the dark yeah. for others to just see where they're going. Be the beacon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah be the beacon. So, so you do have um, a, a, a practice to calm, I mean, we talked about this already, to calm and regulate the nervous system. Well, we were talking a little we bit about, about the, that already. That we talked about that earlier, but I mean, yeah. if we if we want to make it more practice instead of a few a little helpful hints, then again, it is the the deep breathing. It is the both feet uh, on the ground. Uh, if you can be on the grass, more power to you, right? Um, play, play is a wonderful healing modality. Exactly. It is absolutely. If you can play, hot damn, that's fabulous. You go play, right? Um, uh, you know, if you know somebody with a silly dog and you and the silly dog can go play, that's kind of fun. If, uh, little kids, that's kind of fun. Uh, again, 
it's all the simple stuff of trying A, to get out of your head where the worry is, B, to get in your body, to kind of shake off the heebie-jeebies, right? I mean, that's a practice. And I mean, even many shamanic things, you know, you shake off, you shake off, you shake it all out, right? And we have that, you know, the dance, the, well, what's the dance? And you shake it all out, whatever oh, you that put was. your uh, right foot in. You put, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honky yeah, pump. Yeah. Oh, oh, there yeah. we go. There we go, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, but, you know, you shake it all out. So it's... um it, it's getting in your body. Be always be gentle with yourself. You say, "Oh, I didn't do it right," or "I didn't do it enough," or "I don't fit." Hey, you tried. You got a point for today. Let's go. We'll build on it from there. It's just be gentle and loving with yourself. Be gentle and try not to overthink. And also the the doom scrolling and the social media. Uh, do we like to read and get information? Yes, but you you get sucked in, and I I think the the algorithm is designed specifically for that i you know there are some theories out there that you know and, the, and these are kind of, um you know if your mind gets taken over by some of this mush you don't think for yourself and uh, it might be better if we all thought for ourselves or uh, it took a moment to think what what do i think now maybe i'll think differently next week but this is what i think now so um so it's it's trying not to be taken over yeah you know, just who are you what what do you like um Years ago, I um, was a, uh, with a, at a 12-step meeting with a friend, and um, I hadn't been to any of these things before, and I was going in a support role, and the guy was talking about, he was doing a, a kind of a routine. Well, uh, what, what ball team do you like? And the guy said, I don't know. What's your favorite? He says, the Yankees. Oh, mine too. Uh, what's your favorite color? He goes, I don't know. What's yours? He goes, red. Oh, mine too. And because he hadn't he hadn't taken the time to figure out what he likes or what he wants, right? And you hear this a lot from women who've been married for a lot of years and dedicated to family. They're so used to reading their loved ones' needs, they've forgotten to tune in to go, well, what do I need? What do I want? What do I like now, right? What lights me up, right? Yeah. So I'll ask you, Joanne, what lights you up? Oh, my God. Are you kidding? My grandchildren, the three-year-old, yeah. he makes me play with the bubbles. That's yeah. Uh, but Sunday, we play with chalk on the driveway. We dance. It, he lights me up. Yeah, that's great. Okay, uh, Arlene, what lights you up? You do. <laughs> oh, well, you do. <laughs> you do. Yeah, you do. Friends and laughter. I love it. Yeah. And, yeah. and a good martini. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that's everything. Russell Martini, you made but, it up. But, I mean, you know, it's true. If we get out of our own way, we play you know it's it's uh, fun i yeah i told uh, i always tell this story when i met fred my now husband i told him my middle name is it was f u and his eyes went and i said yeah. f u n and if you're not f u n i don't want to know you i told him that from day <laughs> one and i said don't change it because it has to be you know no matter because we're all going to go through the ups and downs and the track right. we have our tragedies right. we have our baggage but if you can't have fun and i think the other important thing is Getting out of our own way and doing as as we we you know we know the three of us doing something for someone else. What's that? Doing something uh, yeah. for someone else. Take it off on you. Always someone worse off than you or whatever. And if you could do something right. for someone else, just even smile. It's a bit. That's big. Right. That's yeah. big. I find the big. It is big. So yeah, it is big. It. it I mean, and yeah. I always pick each other up. You know, it's like we'll laugh until oh my god, our sides are splitting. And and how long have you guys known each other? Oh my God, early and how many lifetimes? Like uh, we have many lifetimes. <laughs> Lifetime. How many Thir- over lifetimes? thirty? So thirty-three uh, years, I think it's been now. Somewhere around thirty-three, something yeah. like that. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I was on the phone the other day with somebody I went to high school with, and and we are just howling with laughter. Right? You know, it's just it's lovely when you you have those long friendships right and you just know each other so well and you tickle each other right it's fun and that that is that is life-giving right you know you're the one that tickles me i always say when i'm around you i feel like (laughs) i told joey i said i feel like a feather goes in me (laughs) (laughs) oh my god my inside i can't help it (laughs) (laughs) that's funny you're so you're, you're you're still waiting for me to get up and chant So uh, listen, a question I have for you as we're, okay. we're wrapping, we're going to be wrapping up here because, you know, but um, what do you do for yourself for balance? 
Well, you know that I discovered a number of years ago, right before the pandemic, I discovered ballroom dance. Now we're talking group classes at the Y, right? And and now we were, I'm doing a little more of that. I, as a kid, I would dance around the living room. As a kid, I asked for ballet and tap lessons and it wasn't, it didn't happen. I probably because of money, right? But you know, I want to be like the other kids. There was a little studio next to the grocery store and they were in the little tutus. And, oh my God, I wanted that so badly. But, um, <laughs> well, I, I decided to take tap and ballet at the Y when I was 21 and or 20 in my early twenties, not 20, I was older than that, maybe 25. And I'm in the class with all these six year olds, right? And the teacher's name is Miss Shirley. And Miss Shirley said, now Adele, we're doing the uh, Christmas program and we like you to be Mrs. Santa Claus. <laughs> I don't think I was gonna be Mrs. Santa Claus tapping my way with the little kids because the little kids could tap and I didn't know what the freak I was doing. But um, <laughs> uh, dancing makes me so happy. My work makes me so happy. I love working with people. That makes me happy. Yeah. Dogs make me happy. I was taking a walk with a friend of mine once and she said, must you speak to every dog we see? I said, absolutely. Goes with a walk. It's not going to change. You know, say hello to every dog. And of course, um, yummy food always makes me happy too. Chocolate is a particular wolf. But oh, um, would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's the, um, and the older I get, the easier it is, right? Because when I was so, you know, seeing umpteen people a day, right? And, and, it was all geared towards that and it just putting a little more breathing room and space in my life because I could and I'm older and all that stuff was great. And um, yeah, and it's just, and also as you get older, the benefit of getting older, it's, it's not all such a tragedy or a drama or whatever because we have more perspective and we could say, okay. Right. And I don't know about you, but I've had moments where I've just kissed it all to God and then it works out. I'm like, okay, I can't do anything about this, right? Just, okay. And I'll just ride the wave because that's riding the wave says, okay, hello, I'm allowing, I'm open, whatever is, I, I want to be my, whatever my best self is that day, right? I'll, I'll do that. And, um, and you know, whoever said laughter is the best medicine, they had a point. It is true. Uh, but I think part of that, when you kiss it to God, it's it's almost what I came to realization is because all of us, we all have our control issues and we uh -huh. really have no control. And when we finally release that, and that's part of prayer too, but when we really let it go, we're just uh -huh. releasing and saying, you know best to our right. highest good, to our highest self, whatever you want to call it, take it, over, take it, do it yeah. and lead right. us to whatever. Yeah. And I so, should believe that. I'm from Texas, and so driving on ice is, you know, not my favorite thing to do. So living up here on the radio one day was um, Jose Feliciano singing Baby Light My Fire. So now anytime I drive on ice, I imagine Jose Feliciano is in the passenger seat. And I'm like, okay, Jose, how are we doing here? Are we allowed to get the fire? Here we go. And I crack myself up, and then I'm not nervous driving on the ice. I, as my family says, I am the funniest person I know. Yeah, this is your riot. Oh my god, I love it. You have to be our resident person on this, Adele. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you, you're coming back with your watching. That fairy energy. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, if if you um, would, if you could, um, end with a um a blessing and a meditation. Oh, um, I would love to with that because you're yeah you're good at that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Anne, do you have anything else that you wanted to add or ask? No, no, I'm I think so delighted. Me. I'm in a great space just being okay. in your energy. I think. Mm -hmm. Thank right you. Well, this, um, this, this is lovely. Okay, let's, um, we're going to shift gears. We're going to raise our frequency just by opening ourselves up, taking some deep breaths. And we're going to do this because the world is going through massive changes. And as I said, we all raised our soul hand to be here now. And everything we do that adds to the light, be it laughter, caring, compassion, kindness, intelligence, or the slow assist, uh, the long arm of help, whatever it might be, it all adds to light. And then there's an accumulation of light, and that accumulation of light tips the balance. And that's why we're here, to tip the balance. So as you breathe in, you quiet your mind. 
As you breathe out, you relax your body. As you breathe in, you quiet your mind. And as you breathe out, you relax your body. Light and love and healing is being showered on each of you. Who is in connection with the sound of my voice? And we ask our angels and our spirits and our guides and our allies and those ever cheerful, light filled ETs to help us, to hold us, and to lift us up. to remind us of the magnificent we all carry with the power of our, of our hearts and with the light we engender. And I'm going to end this with a chant because I'm being urged to. From the heavens and uh, dimensions of highlight frequency, please know that each and every one is you, a being. You are being guided and protected, and you are loved. Please do not hesitate to connect with whatever face or name you give the divine. You are guided, loved, and protected, and we're all here in this soup together to help each other and to tip the balance in favor of the light and well-being for all. And so it is. So it is. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. You just switched positions somehow. I don't know how that happened. Well, on my end here. Oh my lord! Thank you. That was wonderful. so much. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Oh my gosh! Thank, thank you, you, Arlene. Again, I Isn't love it. you. Thank you, all of all of you that are tuned in. If it's the first time, I spread this out. Please subscribe below. Leave comments. It's important to us to grow. We're going to have Adele's information below, and it's Adele Ryan McDowell at gmail.com correct you can find information about her consultations her books all that wonderful good stuff <laughs> remember each of you this is all about you we are all one remember to be the beautiful beacons of light that you are send that light out there shine it out we all need it this world needs it we're gonna right. lift it up i have complete faith here we go. Those lights yeah. shining. Love you, love you. All right. Thank love you, ladies, so much. It was great fun. Thank you.